guys we did it again 67 is the course for today <laughs> it's a different price again i cannot believe it Okay, so far the AC part of our installation. Looks good, nice and clean, right? Okay, let's um, focus here on the DC part and get this going. I want to connect this inverter over the weekend. Just because I haven't got enough 70 mil ring locks. They are on back order. Hopefully they're coming next week and then we can, then we can connect this one here as well. So far? It will be only the main one, the multi. This was my original thought to have another smaller duct here in between the AC and the DC. Oh, noisy inverter up here. And then another one here. Well, this was my original thought about the data and communication cables because I wanted to have them separate from the AC up here and the DC down here um, with another duct. But it gets really messy and ugly now. So, um, well, apparently it is not a problem to have the data cables within the same duct as the DC cables because DC is not a source of EMF. It is the AC which causes problem but DC should be totally fine. So I have now decided to, to use the same duct for our DC cables here uh, as well as for our data and communication and control of wiring here. So this all will go in the same duct but I will continue this smaller duct down here and we'll have a cutout over there somewhere. And then we separate the data and communication cables further in this duct all the way to the end. And I'm gonna show you something. Yeah, we can actually uh, we can actually use a PG25 and use this rubber foam square. Just squeeze it in. And then, bang, it's closed, right? Also, And these PG25 glands are suitable for USB connections. One, two, oh, that's a large one here. Hang on. Three, and even a fourth one. There might be even a fifth one. I haven't got one here. So we can, we can feed multiple cables through one gland and then put the foam in here, tighten the nut, and it's all locked. Yeah, that would suit me totally. So if I drill four more holes for these larger glands there in the data area, <laughs> we are future-proof forever. Uh, never say ever. Can't get it out anymore. So I will put them here in the far corner. So they should be coming out. They should be coming out right over there. And then we've got the Raspi here. And I've got our 12 volt equipment here. It should work. And the smaller cable duct runs all the way there. Cables coming out, going into the gland. Sweet! Yeah, I thought we've got this duct somewhere in between here. And then have another piece up here where the data cable, but it gets really messy then, you know. And I would need to cross DC cables anyway, because from this inverter, the data cables need to go all the way to the Raspi. And well, this duct is here anyway, and I'll just put them in there. If I get troubled further down the track, I need to figure something out. I can do this still. It should be fine. It'll be fine. We'll be fine. Right?
All right, guys. So there we have our data cable duct, which then merges into the DC duct here. So far, we only have one connection from the big inverter, one connection from the small inverter, which need to go to the Raspi. Communication between cable the from here, the network to cable is coming from here. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And we also can run a data cable all the way here and go into the AC part where there is no hole at the moment. This is future. If we have an electronic meter or something sitting in here, we can connect this as well. more washers so and here we have our data cable entry usb network rs485 whatever comes in the future we are prepared now i had to steal three of the clans from here i, I haven't got any spares so next time bunnings it's on my list already i'll bring some more yeah and that's what it looks like from the inside so perfect location of course i cannot mount anything here anyway but the cables will be fine to come out here and then connect to our equipment so I've got this little off cut here from our acrylic and I want to do a little bracket for the Raspi to um, mount it in this inside this compartment and I want to show you how I bent this um, acrylic here I've marked my line already here so I want to bend this one here backwards 90 degrees so we can screw this one to the shelf and this one will be have velcro strips on it for the raspi so i'm using these wooden off cuts here they've got a nice clean corner it doesn't really matter if it's a mill longer or shorter so we do it like this okay squeeze it Coming. let's give it a try so I take another wooden block and just bend it down until I've got 90 degree roughly hold it for a moment and there we go see I've still got these heat marks and the plastic there, I think it's too hot. But I'm not patient enough to warm it up slowly, so it is what it is. Oh, it's actually a bit over 90 degrees, I think. No big deal. I think we are ready to move the shelf back. That'll be exciting. Then we need to figure out the distance between the shelf and the actual garage. Because as I said, I want to screw them back here into the beam to give it more stability. But we need to figure out how far we can actually go back to the actual shelf here. I want to have some space in between here to actually handle cables inside these ducts here, which are then behind the shelf. So that'll be an interesting and long task, I assume. Man, I just wanted to mount the bus bar covers and I realized I haven't made the cutouts yet for the cables. Ah, really? Really? 
See there? There needs to be a cutout. Maybe another one for the positive as well. Okay, that's... That's another hour. I thought we are ready. This was before lunch. Now it is 4.30 and I'm still mucking around with this board. But I installed two new circuit breakers here. For a very special course, you will like this. Just wait. Okay, uh, yeah, nothing I can do. I need to do the cutouts. I think we are ready. I know I've said this many times, but now I think we are ready, ready. Solar charge controllers, special load, two mega fuses for the inverters, home of the Raspi, data cable entries, bus bar covers mounted. All the AC cabling is done. DC cabling in preparation. Incoming solar installation done. Well, I think we can just disconnect the battery. Well, and then push the shelf back in place. Tomorrow, guys, next video, 100%. We are doing it. We are disconnecting the battery tomorrow morning. I've got a whole day time tomorrow. Uh, we also have to take out the smart shunt. The smart shunt goes in this gap there, between bus bar and this cable. And then use 25 millimeter cable through our clans to our main bus bar. That sounds like an easy task tomorrow. Could be a very short and quick video. Well, I guess, and then we can just reconnect our battery here to one of the circuit breakers, which then supplies power to our bus bar where our solar charge controllers are connected to. We just need to connect the fuses as well through our clans again to our DC side of the inverters. That sounds all very easy, right? Okay, we will see how far we come tomorrow. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support, all your great donations here. And I guess I see you again tomorrow morning when we do all this, what we just talked about. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> ah, here, by the way, I also have raised the positive bus bar by almost 20 mil, I would say. Thankfully, the cables were long enough. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you tomorrow in the next video. Until then, stay charged, stay safe, and thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Absolutely. Tomorrow is the day. Yeah, yeah, I'm confident. We can get this done tomorrow. Have a good night's sleep.